Okay, uh, we're gonna move on real quick here and wrap, wrap things up as fast as we can. Uh, leveraging investor data means that you're leveraging databases of um, organized databases of uh, investor leads. So Daphne is here by chance today. He's been with us for seven years. He runs our data division uh, and he oversees and helps uh, maintain the quality and manage our data team, which is always adding new investor leads. So we have you know 77 leads in our crypto database. We have a database of sovereign wealth funds. We have a database of endowment funds. We have a database of multifamily offices, of single family offices. So familyofficedatabases.com has all the details on that. We have like 57 different niche databases. The best way to use these is to genuinely develop relationships, not to blast it out to the most number of people possible, even if your compliance officer says you can, because it's just a random email then. It's not personalized to them. You're not adding value to them first. The best is anytime you buy a plane ticket to go anywhere or drive anywhere, you can see what other investors in that area and could I have breakfast or have a cup of coffee with someone and develop a real relationship? Or, oh, I saw this person on stage. I wonder if I have their contact details already in my database or I saw them in a news article. Maybe I can find them in the database I already have and follow up with them that way. Uh, or figure out how do you add value to some really niche specific type of investor and then try that out on a couple and see if it works, both at live events as well as using databases. So uh, if you have any questions about uh, investor databases, you can talk to Daphne uh, as an expert on the topic. Um, anything you want to add to that, Daphne? Uh, yeah. With that, um, just so you know, we have about 2,300 family offices registered in the database and about 5,000 contacts of CEOs, CIOs, founders, managing partners, and directors through the database. And like Richard says, you have to provide value first. You're not just going to send a blast out to somebody and then expect nothing. There's a lot of people that send out a pitch deck and say, here's my pitch deck. Let me know if you're interested. And they don't get a response and then get offended that they don't get a response. The reality is you just sent everything. They have no questions for you and they're probably not interested. You're not uh, defining yourself as someone different or providing that value to that investor that shows who you are, what you're doing different, and how can you possibly change their lives, right? So it's all about relationships. Uh, you know, uh, otherwise you're just pretty much a newspaper boy, just marketing yourself at the corner, just saying, do you want a newspaper? Do you want a newspaper? Who wants to be friends with that person? I don't think anybody, right? So provide value first, you know, and, and just apply what Richard says, you know, and, and that's the best way. And it's important to know that we have uh, several thousand investors that come to our events, but we don't have every investor on planet Earth coming to our events. And these are all the investors we could find on Google who have their information publicly in there. So just because they're in there, it doesn't mean they know us. It doesn't mean they've been to one of our events. Some of them have, some of them haven't, some of them know us, but haven't come in person. So just know that as well. And then uh, three quick things like that. Uh, sometimes someone will say, oh, I reached out to like 70 different investors in your database and I haven't closed a single investor. Like, What's going on? And we tell them like, well, these are horses on planet Earth that drink water. We can't force them to drink your water. You know, you just have to, you know, navigate that and build a relationship like any other horse you'd find in the wild that might want to drink your water. So we don't control them and, you know, can't push their heads down in the water, right? So this is just to help things go faster. Um, we had Meg Epstein come to our conference in New York, not know what a family office was. And then she worked one of these databases for two years. She landed an $8 million equity check and a $40 million equity check by following up and just being persistent as a female in a male-led uh, real estate industry. And she saw it through and she thanks us for that publicly many times in different public articles that you'll see online. She now manages $450 million and she got her first two big equity check breaks from our databases. Um, and she says all about con persistence and keeping at it and having a creative uh, investment structure. Importantly, if you see in the interviews we've done with her, she credits the investment structure and the persistence. It, a $40 million check equals 400 $100,000 checks. So you could put, spend 400 as much time uh, minutes selling them and you'd break even and you'd have way easier investor relations the next morning, right? Um, Someone who's worth 100 million wants a different structure than someone that's worth 1 million, obviously. But uh, that's something to keep in mind. Uh, Michael Scott runs a company called Cannapreneur. He had never raised capital before. He was a wealth advisor, wanted to buy a cannabis company. He's trying to raise 8 million and then a later 40 million. He was really struggling. He had only raised 4 million from family and friends. We had one phone call. I told him I don't do phone calls. I'm too busy. We have 1,000 members. Uh, he got me on the phone to do a short phone call, uh, not to encourage everyone now asking for uh, personal feedback, which we do every quarter in the materials. But we had a short call. It was helpful to him. He then raised uh, initial $8 million he needed. Then he went on to raise $40 million. And then two years later, he said on stage at our Dallas event last year, that he just sold the company for $120 million. And he credited us to 
the momentum of being able to figure out like, how do I raise $40 million? I've never raised a dollar before. So uh, that wasn't specific to the databases. I just remembered that case study. I wanted to share that with you guys.